I'm Kieran Daly, editor of AI Business, here with Sanjay Srivastava, uh, Chief Digital Officer of Gempact. Uh, Sanjay, how are you finding the AI Summit today? Well, it's been a great day for us. It's been good to kind of walk around and see some of the uh, companies that are here and to talk to some of the people that I think uh, that actually had a chance to sit through and listen to, what, uh, to one of our presentations. It's been fantastic. Thank you for having us. Great. Um, so I understand you did a keynote about the three challenges facing enterprises with AI. Can you just expand a little bit on that? Um, obviously, some people would have seen you speak today, but if you just to summarize, what, what should the key takeaways be of that? Look, um, basically, there is a lot of um, great uh, coverage on AI and the opportunities and the possibilities that it delivers for enterprises. And I think it's fantastic. We've been at it for the last three, four years, and we found some fantastic use cases and are seeing some great outcomes. The other part of the story, though, is that whenever you try new things, um, there are challenges. And so what we did today was shared with the community the top three challenges that we see when you try and implement artificial intelligence in the context of an enterprise application. And then we talked a little bit about how we've overcome them and how we've worked through that. So I thought it was a great discussion. I'll tell you the top three challenges from our perspective in uh, AI, in implementing AI in, in the enterprise. Number one is explainable AI. Number two is low data density application cases. And number three is lack of deep knowledge graphs. And I'll come back and revisit them. So on the first one, the notion of explainable AI is just as simple as that, which is AI needs to be able to explain itself. And most solutions that you traditionally come across have this black box approach to it, which is, we've got it, trust us, here's the answer. And the problem with that approach is for most regulators, it's an insufficient sort of case for being able to use. And also, I think for most enterprises where adoption is key, the problem is if people don't understand it, uh, they can't explain it, it's difficult to adopt it, and then it gets into change management and it delays the adoption. So I tell you that making AI explainable is really instrumental to making it successful. And the way we've done that is we design that with end in sight. So when you implement AI, we do it in bite-sized chunks, and every chunk we explain. So in our, uh, one of the use cases we have is we, for instance, look at balance sheets, and we can create a risk score, but if you ever wondered why, you could click on it, it explodes it to the next set of numbers, click again, next set of numbers, and you can get right down to the actual footnote that led to that conclusion. The second big one for us is this notion of low data density applications. We're all used to Gmail and so forth, and we know how effective it is in high, high data density when you have lots and lots of data. But most enterprises are either don't have them or it's too expensive to extract it and, and to normalize it and use it. And so, you, so what you have to realize is that not all AI is created equal, and you have to look in the set of options that you have in AI to pick the right one for the job at hand. And indeed, we found a variety of AI techniques that actually work in low data density application areas, but you have to be thoughtful about those choices. And I, of course, the third one is very simple, which is data knowledge graphs. So you know, we all turn to our Siri and to our Alexas and ask for the nearest Starbucks or Pete's Coffee and so forth, and we know all that handles really well. When you get to a real tough business question, the domain around that isn't sufficiently captured in knowledge graphs to be able to us, uh, allow us to just plug it in and put it to use. And so what you really have to do and what we learned through the mechanism is you have to take AI techniques and then you have to surround it with domain knowledge and you have to contextualize it. You have to goal orient the machine learning. You have to uh, distill the in intelligence that's coming out in the context of domain. And so using domain knowledge and applying process understanding is absolutely key to, material, key to materializing success. So those are the three uh, challenges that we talked about. We talked about some of the approaches we've taken. I thought it was a great discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I understand that today there was um, new features announced for Genpack Cora. And I just want, maybe can you tell me a little bit about where these new features and the general vision for Cora fits into answering those challenges for enterprises? You're right. We made an announcement today of Cora 2.0. It's the newest release of our Cora platform. And you'll recall about a year ago we introduced Cora. That was Cora 1.0. And the central notion that we subscribe to is that AI and digital, for that matter, is actually a journey. It's not a destination. And what you do today leads into something you do tomorrow. I'll give you an easy case in point. We start with experiments uh, and POCs around R, uh, RPA, robotic process automation. Oftentimes it very quickly moves into an enterprise-wide deployment, so you'll get about 1,000 robots deployed. And then the discussion becomes, how do I machine learn on the data that now is coming through that we didn't previously have? You get results on that machine learning, you understand some patterns, and then the discussion shifts to how do you put conversational AI chatbot on the front end so you can self-query um, you can have customers self-query and get the responses, right? So what's happening is RPA is moving to machine learning, machine learning is moving to conversational AI, and that's the journey of digital, that's the journey of AI. 
And really to be able to provide that orchestration for clients of that journey using a component of different digital technologies, we built Cora, and that was Cora 1.0. What we've done today is we've announced Cora 2.0, and really at the core of it, we've added, uh, first off, a customer journey mapping capability. We think customer experience is key, and it's the starting point for anything we do with AI and digital. So we've got a really interesting piece of technology. It's a company we acquired last year that we've now incorporated in and integrated in, and it allows you to manage and understand customer journeys with scientific detail. And then around that, we apply Cora technologies, and then on the outside edge, we put actually some really interesting governance capabilities. So command and control, we've added some analytic depth, so really high performance, high end data lake platform. And then we pulled it together in the same cohesive framework that gives you modularity and integration for enterprise environments. So Cora 2.0 is now out today. Uh, we're really pleased with that and, uh, and, it, and uh, I'm glad to share it here at the AI Summit. Well, huge congratulations on, on the announcement. Um, one question I'm just wondering is, is what, why balance these the kind of conversational customer facing aspects with the kind of back end RPA that people might not necessarily see, you know, visibly or overtly, but feel the benefits of? Yeah, look, there's a real connection between uh, a number of AI technologies and a number of analytics and automation capabilities. And the reason for that is, think of AI, if you will, as a solution, and by itself, it's a solution looking for a problem. So the way to start successful AI deployments is to think about the problem, and then when you instrument the answer to the problem, part of the answer comes from AI, but a part of the answer will come from service orchestration. It's gonna come from entity extraction. It'll come from analytics and data science capabilities. And so you need to be able to combine that to deliver the full client experience, and that's really the reason for the combination of those technologies. Absolutely. So. Um just to kind of wrap up, I mean, how, how are you hoping to move forward with Core in the next six months now these announcements have been made? Who, who, what, who are you looking to benefit? Look, I think Core is fundamentally designed, it was originally designed for us to implement AI and analytics and automation for our clients. We've now opened it up to the world. So we actually deploy it for customers directly and they're using Cora today. Uh, it's up and running in uh, hundreds of enterprise environments as we speak. Uh, we have millions of transactions that are actually being processed, so this is a scale platform at deployment. And to answer your question, what's next? I think what comes next is that we continue to build more capabilities, we continue to integrate more partners, we've opened up our API in true open spirit, it's on Swagger now, so it's a true enterprise platform, and it's set up for success for the future. Wow, Sanjay, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thanks for your time again today. All right, okay. It's great to speak again.